Okay. This one, flat earth tool number two. The way this would work, now, now this, I've never tested this particular machine, this, not machine, this device or setup. This one was actually seized, uh, was seized on, and, uh, missing some components, but not, it was just the base. And when I finally found it and got it back, it um, it just doesn't really work. I'll show you the same. It, it, it works, but it doesn't, it's not as precise as it should be. I mean, this is, I propped it up with a rock. In any case, so the idea is, when the sunlight comes from the east, my compass, and I'll give you a close-up, sunlight will come through these slots, it'll cast a shadow, because there's these louvers, it'll cause the shadow to be here. This is actually backwards, it's like this. It'll cause a shadow on the face of this, and it will cause a shadow because this is smaller in nature. A shadow will hit the face, and a shadow will come across the side. This is, this is pointed due east. Well, the sun will come up. I had this all mapped out. I'm gonna give you a close up on this piece. This is it's trash now, but it wasn't trash when I built it. So let's have a look see at that bad boy. It's kind of windy out here. Okay. So the idea is and this is magnetic. Magnetic compass east. So, so the sunlight's coming from the east. And then obviously I set these up with those with a plumb bob, the complementary angles for the latitude, like I explained before, so it's not just arbitrarily placed on the ground. But people ask about the compass, and I keep saying magnetic. The problem is all compasses, I guess the plural will be compi, I don't know. They magnetize them to follow what's called the magnetic north. The problem with using a compass like this for an observation like this is that, see, any ferrous metal, see, this doesn't point north. It, it follows magnetic declination lines. So it's not very reliable when it comes to sun angles and stuff like that and geometry because this is magnetic. It doesn't really help us. It gives us a rough estimate. But how I set this machine up, machine again, this device up, was not magnetic north. Okay. Or magnetic east. Well, there's only one magnetic north, and then 90 degrees of that would be east. Okay, so this is the tool. So what, what the idea is, as the sun rises, if it's caused by the rotation, right, it comes up, the sunlight will go through these slots. The sunlight will go through right here will cause a, a negative no sunlight and if you look up uh what do they call that um yeah so the sun comes from there shines through here i'll come back to this a little bit because this one was this one was really exciting but what happens is there's a thing called the young's double split or double slit experiment so the wave pattern that comes through here right will have an outcome if you believe that light travels as the particle. But in any case, this doesn't take an uh, amount of time. All we need is small observation to uh, express what's going on here. Now, this is even still broken. On the side here, you can barely see, I have drawn this compass. Right? So you have these angles. So, okay, where's the sun, the light point of this? This had a, a special distance. Back when I was smarter, from those louvers, the sunlight will come in. Can't you see it no more? And it'll hit these marks in a vertical climb. See? Yes, it's all broken. Actually, I think this was like this. I think this straight line was. Somehow, no, see, it's still wrong. You can see where I have two angles. 
Well, there's one angle. These are a horizontal. Light comes through these little louvers. But the idea is, and this is kind of, see. Okay, so it's not just the light going up the face of this, see? It's the light, the light will actually come through and the light will hit this surface and it will go across this surface. So there's two things that have to happen with this light. So, as the sun hits this, well, let me just kind of give you a little thing and I'll maybe point it at the sun. Because the sun is actually way down, I don't know, maybe about 4, 35 o'clock. But, this is one of the tools. This one will never work again. See this bend? This bend right here. Do you see how this little louver is bent from being broken or from being like wet? That'll cause it a warped shadow. It'll cause a bended, an angle, like an arc. It's gotta be straight. In any case, let me see if I can turn this around for you. Point it right at the sun. Okay, see, there's shadows coming through. Let's see how this thing go. Yeah, people suck, so I didn't really get to do a lot of this stuff in a good part of my development. Okay, so as the sunlight comes through it, I don't know if you can see any shadows or not, because like this thing is not really angled for it. Yeah, so you can't see anything. Because this whole entire column is in the shadow of the top of this. But that's all right. You get a, you get a gist on what happens. As the sunlight comes through, cast a shadow, and you can measure these angles. Just takes a little little thought, you know. Takes just takes one idea to change the world. Okay, now what I've found, and I will, I won't tell you my outcome. I'll just give you the information because I believe the information is free, and then everyone's entitled to information, and it shouldn't be copyrighted or patented. I originally was going to patent some of this stuff, but there's really no sense. My buddy told me that you spend more money defending your patent with attorneys than you ever will getting your point across. So this is all free. It's not copyrighted. It's not patent pending or none of that stuff. If you feel you can improve or... In any case, so as the light comes through here. Now, one of what I found, four outcomes. Let's see. Yeah, one of four outcomes can happen. When the diameter of the sun is in... in line when, when, the, when the sun when the sun up there comes through this thing right here and makes a shadow across that column one thing has to happen something right so either the light's gonna go straight across or the light's gonna go on angles up or the light's gonna go on angles down across this now the shadow casted or the light's going to go through individual one of these or overall and have angles going up and down and straight something has to happen something did happen light went through it and made the shadows just like they did on the ground but i'll give you what i'm trying to explain in a drawing and i'll give you the numbers and I'll give you the locations, and you can tell me you, what you predict the outcome should be based on the geometry of the Earth. And then go build your own. It's very simple. I don't know if you guys have Home Depot or nothing like that. You can build this. It's inexpensive. And then you can go, I mean, go outside. The thing I didn't want to do was speculate. I didn't want to have these ideas why something's true or why something's false i want demonstrable information and data so what we can work through that and develop diplomacy between each other not just oh well i believe a thing because belief belief is uh it's not real it's a fiction anyway i'm gonna get the next one out and see if i set it up still
Okay. Now, the other device that has the slots, like this, has another column, two columns, with the um, angles, right? Now, that one, I'm going to attach all these explanations to each video so you don't mix them up. So, what I have is I have where I live, I have a mountain. Well, I'm, on, I'm on the foreground of that mountain right now tonight. But the mountain goes like this. Right? Okay. Now, when the sun comes up, you can see the sun hit the toppest parts of the mountain. Sun. And what it does is it starts to illuminate going down. So you can be away from the mountain and you can see the sunlight until the whole entire mountain is all sun. All sunlight. Now it inspired me to find out this mountain and more about it and all those different things. So what I found is a triangle. Because we know we like the functionality of triangles. They talk about... Um, What's called the Pythagorean theorem. You have Pythagorean theorem, right? A squared plus B squared is equal to the sum of C squared. Okay, everyone knows the Pythagorean theorem, but what they don't go into, and they should in schooling, is what's called Thales theorem. Okay, so if I have a point. Every single point on this circle is a radius. Same distance, same distance, same distance. So when I have another point on the circle, right, I can say, okay, if I intersect this line and this line, no matter where, I can find this line to be 90 degrees. I don't want to go into Thales' theorem because... I'm not here giving you a lecture about geometry or trigonometry or the function of triangles. I just want to get some information to see what you do and see what you can come up with. So Thales' theorem is far more profitable than Pythagorean theorem because they're essentially the same thing. You just rotate it and you put it anyway. Hold on. Here we go. Sorry. <laughs> I'm rambling on. I usually do when I'm excited. I like to, I like I like thinking. I like thoughts. Okay, so on that mountain when the sun comes down, okay, so on your ball, your ball Earth, you have a radius, right, of three thousand nine hundred sixty-nine miles. If I, I don't remember. I don't remember the exact numbers. So, above your radius, you have a given height, okay? Given by given, I'm going to give it to you. Right there. Pew. Equals. Whoa, what the hell? It went dark. There we go. And God said, let there be light. All right. Equals 7,600 feet okay the distance above sea level for this observation with the slotted device right there i put it right there now the next obtrusion across the horizon that's the same height is it was over 800 44,800 feet away. So the distance of intersection around your curve is this feet, this amount of feet. Now, if you make the ratio, you'll know the triangle. The problem is, is there's so much dirt. Probably a few hundred feet of dirt in the way 
that will cast a shadow onto this device. Now, I don't know how to draw this out simpler so I don't give too, too much information so you don't know my observation. Because what I did is not what someone else can do. Everyone needs to go experience it for themselves. I don't want to poison the well and say, I saw this, therefore, this is what happens. That's not scientific. And it's not fair. And then that's just outright lazy. So, what I, what I want is I want, I want you to think and maybe talk to your comrades and say what we would see. Predict the outcome of this observation. If I have this device, right? And as these slots, the sunlight comes through this onto another device, another device. And it has these angles, you know, like, like what I showed you. What would be the outcome of the sunlight hitting this? So you'd have these horizontal, sorry, they're horizontal lines, but they climb vertically exponentially. And on the side, you have the circles. So when the sunlight goes through this and casts and casts, casts its uh, shadows onto the other column, what would you see? You could see if I had to if I had to guess. I don't have to guess. <laughs> I did the observation. <laughs> no guessing for me. Okay, so if I had the column where the light comes through, let's just illustrate it orthographically because people don't understand that there's different types of views and they have different outcomes. So this would be the column where the slots go through. The louvers. Okay. And over here, we have the column B, the other, the separate column. So this column now has dimension to it because we have two things going on with it. We have the face of it, the vertical climb. Let me draw this better so you understand a little more comprehension. If I have column B, Okay, now what I have is I have the vertical, vertical climb of shadows, and I have marked, right, an arc down the side of this, which would have these angles, calculable angles. Now, as the sunlight comes through this, what would you think the outcome would be across this angle and the vertical climb angle? Because what I found when it started to calculate, like try to figure out light, if I have light going through, this is not the Young's double split experiment yet. If I have a, a source, right? I have a box. Now, when light goes through this, light will come out like this in a cone. Or it'll come out straight. Or it'll come out like that. Or all of those together. Now, when I have multiple slots, and this is the Young's, Now we have a double slip, double those two. When this light, this light 
intersect, they create a wave function of their own. Now this wave function, because this one's going like this, propagating like this, propagating like this, this one will have an interruption between these two, creating one wave function. Now, if I have even yet another, see what they didn't tell you in school is the Young's tri-slit experiment. Well, hold on. Because my apparatus had multiple slits. Now, what will these wave functions calculate to? Well, you say, okay, according to the double slit, we could say it's going to be one wave function at a given distance. Because waves don't collapse upon each, uh, upon each other. They'll actually propagate on the frequency of light. So, sorry, I went too far. What happens is, if I have a wave, okay, and I have another wave, this wave will cancel out. It'll, it'll intersect. It'll, it'll, be, it'll carry that wave. It's the same as a ham radio. You, you can essentially store energy in a wave or, or carry energy in a wave. So, what? Well, anyway, long story short, sorry, I'm just, I'm just I'm rambling on now. What, what, what would happen on this column? What would be the outcome of this column? I shouldn't give you this answer here. So would the light go up on an angle? Would it go down on an angle? What would it do? Now, in geometry, okay, geometry dictates... And if I have the values that I gave you, sorry these videos are so long, but I gotta get my point across in a cordial term. Okay, so if I have if I have if I have a, a ball, if I have a circle, okay, and I have a point, and I have this tower, no matter how big or small, and I have the sunlight which is infinite, well, it's not infinite, but it's basically way bigger than this ball. When the sunlight crests this apparatus, And these will actually be 0 0.52 degrees. But what's going to look like on this apparatus that's casting a shadow? Well, in this drawing, let's see if I can guess this because this is backwards because my camera's backward. The angle... Stupid... Thing. The angle is coming up, right? It's going up across this. This angle would be measurable, measurable angle. As the earth rotated until it became perpendicular, it would have a different angle. This is my louvers. And then after it rotated past, see the angle now? Obtuse, acute, perpendicular. There would be an outcome based off the shadows of that device. So my point is, with the numbers, Let's calculate what would happen on a ball.
And then let's see what actually happens in the real world. Because I hate speculation. And I hate liars. And I hate thieves. And I hate crooks. So that's number two. Alright, let's try the next one.